Welcome, welcome back, y'all, to Meet the Consultant with Debate Boutique. I'm super excited to be introducing our lovely new staff consultant. Um, but before we get into any of those introductions and the questions that students, um, you know, the hard pressing questions that students need to ask when making decisions about their debate summer, I wanted to remind everyone that for our summer programming, we have the four week high school program for both LD and policy that is from J July 1st through July 29th. So open registration until we fill in our 26 spots intentionally 26 because we put a lot of time into the programming and details of individual curriculum and schedules for students so once those 26 spots are filled up that's it we're done but we also are hosting for the college college starts july 26th through august 5th or actually I think July 26th, July 27th probably is correct, uh, to August 5th. It's our 10-day college program. So that is also open for everyone. And reminder, financial accessibility. We have the form. A lot of folks have been filling that out, which is super exciting. And we love getting to go through that and to offer folks the reduced price because we are making a mission to not turn students away. So if you are someone who is saying, uh, I don't know if this is something that is financially accessible to you, I promise you as the person who receives those responses and sends out the emails that this is something that can be accessible so we are super excited to be hosting this summer and looking forward to have those 26 high school students and those 20 college students and those are all the updates but we're gonna get into this interview and as y'all can tell this is a super exciting one because this is a full kind of matriculation of Debate Boutique alum, which I'm super excited about with Kate Marin from Binghamton University. We're wearing the same Debate Boutique gear, which there's going to be stuff for our summer students who enroll, which is going to be fun. I'm working on those things on the side, but it's a, it's a cool place to be, uh, to work with someone who's worked with Debate Boutique. So... Let's get into it. First, hello, Kate, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I am doing well, I'm super excited to do this interview and to get you posted and announced to the world that you are a new staff member with Debate Boutique. Um, the first question, we're gonna just jump right into it and do the Caitlin method, not the me method, um, <laughs> is who are you? What are your debater credentials as a competitor? Um, we'll just start there. High school, yeah. college, what's going on? Yeah, um, so I started debating like the first day of my freshman year of high school. I went to the debate club after school meeting. I actually started in PF. Um, my school didn't have a national circuit program. So I went from PF um, to a two week camp at Utniff, also in PF, and then started doing LD. Um, I did LD for the rest of my high school career, mostly on the local circuit until my junior and senior year while going to, I went to UMICH's camp and then Berkeley's um, policy camps. Um, so I had a lot of local circuit success. Um, I went to state three years in a row. I went to um, NSDA nationals. And then by the end of my senior year, I was clearing consistently and getting speaker awards at uh, national circuit, like open tournaments. Um, but it was kind of, I kind of ran out of time on that one. Um, but then going into college, I made it my priority to end up at a school with a national policy program because that's something I've always really wanted to do. Um, so this year, um, my partner and I, um, we cleared at the Shirley and we also, um, we won our regional tournament and then we also qualified the NDT. So we're prepping for that now. Yes, this one, we love small school, small programs doing big things uh, once given the opportunity in college. So yes, I love that. Um, to transition into question number two, because I do have some questions about some of the things that you said, mm -hmm. is now co coaching credentials, so the teaching aspect of what you've done, who have you worked with? Um, how maybe has answer number one informed to answer your answer number two in terms of who you've worked with, how that provides insight into your coaching background? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess I'll start with that part of the question, which is um, as a kind of local circuit debater from a small school trying to break into the national circuit, um, there were a lot of times where I felt kind of ostracized. 
um, or maybe I just didn't know what was going on. I didn't have a coach. Um, I was doing all of my own coaching and like finding camps on my own and, you know, teaching myself. Um, and so one of the things that's really important to me is making sure that students have access to resources that they might not get through their schools. And then also helping to maintain like an open and welcoming environment um, because I don't feel that anyone should ever be judged for like not knowing something or having a different argumentative style or preference. Um, and I feel like the job of an educator is to like spend time learning about your students and supporting the things that they want to do and the things that they want to learn. And so that has definitely come out in the particular instances where I've done teaching and coaching. Um, so in high school, I was responsible for all of my teams, um, coaching and teaching. I designed a curriculum, I gave lectures, um, I did all of the topic prep and drills and practices, etc. And I also started a middle school program in my district um, to try to bring debate to um, younger kids. And so I was in charge of teaching that as well. Um, and so I kind of carried that forward into college. I definitely wanted to keep teaching. So I was able to start working at the Broome County Debate Alliance, which mostly works with kids. And so that's been really amazing. It's kind of a different environment going from working with high schoolers to working with elementary school kids, um, which has definitely given me some creative strategies to explain things and field some interesting questions. I once had somebody ask um, who Obama was and what is the military? And <laughs> sometimes you have to stop for a second and be like, oh, <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, exactly, yeah, like let's let's have this talk conversation. Um, but one of the things that we do that I think is the most important is we work with kids in the Broome County area who don't have access to debate programs. Um, so we started working on creating a national circuit policy program for those kids um, using debates or Binghamton debates resources. Um, and so that's been really amazing to help kids who didn't have the opportunity to learn have access to those resources. Um, other than that, I've given some guest lectures um, for some of my friends' teams. Um, those have mostly been to Parley debaters. And then um, the other thing that I do is, so I, when I judge, I look out for students who are debating in a local circuit style and ask them if they want, you know, resources and help. And so I've actually coached a couple kids that way. Um, one of them I actually coached to state um, just by kind of sharing the resources that I have and walking them through some of the things that change from the local circuit to the national circuit. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think that a lot of people don't think about this portion when what makes not only a good coach, but a good experience for students is after the accolades of, oh my gosh, your coach has done so many great things. I know a lot of really great debaters that are really bad coaches um, because they don't think about curriculum design. So my ears buzz when I hear that from you of creating lectures for students, for you know designing strategies to teach. Um, so I think that, that is a excellent asset for us to be adding to debate boutique um, because it's important every student learns differently and being able to be in a conversation in a room of folks who are all geared towards how do we create something that makes sense to this student is going to be really really fun so i love 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 that um, in turn to question number three is going to be your educator technique slash argumentative style. So what I yeah. mean by that, or what are some arguments, right? That um, you went for, go for, but then this is a kind of weird, maybe fourth question, but it's a subset of the third, I'll make it, is for that curriculum design, can you explain kind of an outlook or method for what you produced and why? So I guess that yeah. is kind of two different questions. Arguments and then what, give me an example of a curriculum design, why, and kind of execution. Definitely. Um, okay, so I guess I'll start with my argumentative background. Um, so I am at this point primarily a K debater. I do have all of the like local circuit LD, you know, analytical philosophy, philosophy, excuse me, um, ethical philosophy, all of that kind of background. Um, and then from doing PF and basically every speech event, there, there is absolutely that aspect. Um, but in terms of what I've read in national circuit environments, in high school, it was a lot of soft left apps. And then I read Nietzsche um, on the neg basically my entire senior year. At this point, I'm reading a lot of queer theory, um, 
Nietzsche and then metaphysics like more broadly, Deleuze. Um, I've been reading a lot about different studies of humanism, epistemology, um, and then a lot of semiotic stuff. Um, in terms of my like personal research interests, I'm double majoring in psychology and linguistics and hoping to research psycholinguistics. Um, so I have a lot of interest in theories of like language and communication, which is super relevant to debate. Nice. Um, so that is kind of my argumentative background. In terms of the ways that I would explain things, I think there are kind of there are two different examples that I'll give, but I'll say that my largest focus at any point is making sure that I'm on the same page as my students. So if I try explaining something one way, I'm always like waiting to make sure that they got it or if we can go back and like re-explain it in a different way or in a different learning style, potentially with visuals or different examples. I use a lot of analogies um, because that's how I learn best. So one example that I'll give is teaching kids to go from local circuit debate to national circuit debate. And the biggest pieces of that I have found is like jargon mostly and explaining which parts of arguments can be translated into different things. So one thing that I've noticed a lot is that people will use a lot of jargon and slang and either not explain it or maybe not 100% know exactly what its implications are in relation to different parts on the flow. And so when I was explaining, for instance, the value and criterion structure, which is the local circuit LD concept where you have like a philosophy that you use to evaluate the round, um, and that is how you evaluate impacts. I took that and explained it in relation to role of the ballot, role of the judge, and like framing arguments to so the interaction between utilitarianism and kind of like critical frameworks to evaluate impacts. And using the analogy for with something that these students already understood, it was a lot easier to position how this like new concept would work in relation to what they were learning. Um, that's a very debate, like technical, technical, like specific example, but for something like a critical theory concept that I would that I was explaining, I tend to go for material examples of kind of abstract concepts. So one example is um, Deleuze and Guattari's explanation of consciousness and like how that kind of can exist in relation to affect. So this is a lot of like high theory words that don't have a solid grounding in reality. And so the example we give in our affirmative is actually about rocks. It's that like the electron movement at the basis of like the particulate level is representative of the movement that everything has in nature, that those things are alive. So that works well for me, but I know a lot of people who are like rocks don't have feelings, like this doesn't make any sense. So another example that I've used is if you imagine the entire universe as a pool table, completely flat surface with pool balls on it, right? If you hit a pool ball with a stick, it's gonna move in relation to the pool key or the pool stick, right? Um, with, along the laws of physics and gravity, whatever we've decided about the universe. However, if you had a person with a pool ball, they get to choose how they react. They can yell at you, they can throw it back, right? So the difference between these two things is the ability to choose how you react to the movement of the universe itself, to the things that happen to you. That movement, so the movement of the pool cue, the pool ball, your reaction, those things are affect. They're literally the energy of the universe. And the choice, between, the ability to choose your reaction is consciousness. Um, so this is like inhuman, um, inhuman affect as like blues and watery explain it. And I tend to find that makes more sense than trying to talk about rocks at a molecular level. Hey, it made that made a lot more sense to me. Uh, I was the, the, I'm a pool I'm a pool game reference. Even oh though yeah, <laughs> that was for me. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Yes, because um, I've been really that love that um, for a lot of reasons. I've been really digging deep into kind of pedagogical training. Um, and the part of that is the different type of learners um, that students are. So some students are visual learners. Some are, I learned a phrase, kinesthetic uh, learners, where you receive something and then you have to do it. You have to put it in practice. Or they're, you know, lecture-based, like, talk, you know, show me the, the piece of paper. I got it. The brain works. And so all these different types of learning some students are a kind of combination of some, most people are, but they've got a more dominant learning style. So I really, really love this kind of visual example um, that, you're, that you've given. So I think that that would work and speaks to different learning patterns for students. Like even myself, I'm, like, I re I'm realizing more and more the kind of learner that even I am. I love a good example. I love a good, like the words, 
great. I, like we can go all day long talking about high theory words, but yeah. there's something so awesome about the examples that go, huh, huh. And then you crafting your own, being able to become from the student to the lecturer themselves. Um, so I love that completely. I'm excited Thank because you. it gets my brain thinking a lot more. So I'm um, exactly the same way. <laughs> yeah, like, like, oh, okay. Because we've got, yeah, no, without disclosing a lot of debate with business. Uh, well, out of the public quite yet. Um, awesome. So only really have one more question. And that is why you plus debate boutique, right? So that could be answered in two different ways or two different parts rather. So like why debate boutique, but more specifically you at debate boutique things that maybe that fit your perspective that fit your kind of outlook about what debate teaching practices should be debate boutique broadly really allowing for you to have some openness and creativity with this response yeah um so i guess i'll start with why debate boutique so i've been to as i said um i think at this point four camps uh, debate camps i mean and the first three of them were kind of the traditional um like you have lab and lecture and you know you're in a big group of people um and that works for some people I didn't find that it worked very well for me for a number of reasons mostly the ones that I've again talked about kind of not feeling like my particular needs and priorities were being put first and that the need wasn't really to teach so much as to create like carbon copies of the lab leaders <laughs> um what I really loved about coming to debate boutique was I felt like because of how small the like sizes of like lecture and meeting are and also just because of the priorities that this organization sets i felt like everybody took time to get to know each other that the priority was making sure that people were comfortable and that they felt safe to develop their own arguments to think about the things that they were passionate about to learn about debate the way that they conceptualized it and to develop those things instead of kind of learning one prescribed set way as to how debate should look and I think that gets into what I believe debate should be, which is a site of critical thinking and, you know, like educational exploration and personal growth and having the opportunity to say, you know, this is the particular argument I want to learn about. This is the person I'd like to learn it from was almost liberating um, to just like have that opportunity to not be judged for wanting to read certain things um, was really amazing. So in terms of me plus debate critique, I think the first thing is kind of the philosophy I just explained, which is that I think debate should be a site for people to explore what they're interested in. And I think we should be putting people in like leadership and teaching positions that are prioritizing the student's vision of the space with kind of with the combined experience of having done those things themselves. Um, the second thing that I would say is that my teaching experience really works with a lot of, or like works in a lot of having to listen to my students and hear what they're telling me and like focus on those interactions so that I can kind of change how I'm teaching. And I think that's a really important aspect in an educator, particularly in an activity that is so multifaceted in like the ways that it can look. Um, the last thing I would say is I think I do have a relatively unique background in terms of someone who's doing national circuit coaching um, in that I started in PF and LD and speech and all these local circuit events and I you know I did extemp and I did congress and I kind of went between the two circuits and that has given me I think a kind of unique perception of you know the flow and strategy that allows me to sometimes see it in a slightly different way than somebody who's been in you know policy debate the same way their whole career. Yeah I <laughs> What's been said has been said. Uh, I love that completely. And it really, that my energy has been kind of lifted um, with the excitement that I have for what we're doing um, with Debate Boutique. So thank you so much, Kate. One, for the kind words, but two, for putting trust in working with us. Because um, I do not take that lightly. It means a lot to me just that there is value to be seen to add um, to this. And so I'm super excited for all the collaboration and just spaces for you to thrive as an educator um, with yeah. the boutique and just outside of that are going to happen. So y'all saw it here first, folks. 
if you or someone who, you know, relates to Kate's story slash thinks that this kind of personalized method is something that you want to be part of your summer, then you know where to go because it'll all be posted down below um, in the description box as well as our website, debateboutique.com. And yeah, I look forward to seeing who our 26 are. I mean, I know who 10 are, but that love is 16. We shall see. All right, y'all. Bye. Bye.